Hello, welcome to another episode of the Wisdom and the Tangents podcast. Episode two hundred and four is a good one. This is a <laughs> this is a, a, a ugh, it's a personal one. It's a open one. Um, you know, I try to be very open with things in my business. Um, I, I think it's really important for business coaches to be open. Uh, if you're going to be teaching about business, uh, you need to be open about your business. So uh, yeah, I've, I mean, I have been known to like pull up my financial statements and stuff uh, with coaching clients to just show like, this works. It's, this is what's going on. And also like, I know when my uh, my slow times are, so I can prepare for that ahead of time. Uh, but anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. Not finances, um, but uh, but we are talking about uh, another thing that's a little bit personal uh, and something that I have to like. My I've mentioned this before. I'm a recovering perfectionist. And I am definitely pushing through that to share the story today because I'm sharing the story of my first one-star review. I know, I know, they're not great. Uh, hopefully you don't have any. I didn't for years. Um, but, you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you get uh, uh, just a, a, a bad pairing where maybe that client wasn't the best for you and then they leave a negative review because... Uh, you didn't meet the expectations that they had, which a lot of that has to do with uh, communicating expectations before you even work together, which is a whole nother episode. Um, but yeah, today, um, today I'm sharing about my first one star review, which happened uh, last year, 2023. It was uh, 2023 was a rough year. It was a pretty terrible year. It, there was so much going on. So many things happened, uh, personal life and business life, and they all just kind of culminated together and stacked on top of each other and banded together to just beat me down uh, in 2023. I know from talking to a few of you, you also felt very similarly uh, with last year. So, um, you know, uh, I'm hoping that 2024 is better for you. Uh, the, we've got a lot of things that we can work on. You know, I've got a lot of things that I'm working on to make this year better, which is already better, uh, but also uh, next year as well. So why was 2023 such a rough year? Well, um, like I said, there were a lot of factors kind of on, on top of each other. Um, we had a lot of sicknesses and stuff through a lot of the year, kids in school, COVID, flu, all things just happening. Uh, so that was part of it. But one thing in particular uh, that really led to a terrible year and also uh, the beginning of my one-star review was that I had a couple contractors who um, were not holding up their side of the contract. Uh, and, and that was reflecting poorly on me uh, because I'm the boss and it should reflect poorly on me. Uh, and as a boss, as the, as the lead, as the owner of your business, um, you do take responsibility for those that you hire. And, uh, I know part of this was probably poor management from me because I was very stressed with all the stuff just going on in life and not having enough time to work in my business. And, um, and a, a large portion of this was because they just weren't holding up their side of the bargain. Um, and, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to name names. I don't want to get too deep into all of that um, because, you know, we are, we are all still friends. We have made amends and uh, I, I'm not hiring them back, but, uh, but, you know, we are, we're friendly again. Um, but yeah, uh, long story short, um, photos and videos were not backed up properly. Some hard drives crashed, some were lost, and others uh, just uh, didn't show up on the wedding day, which made it difficult for me because then I was now doing photo and video in one person, and that was not what the client had uh, had paid for. So there was a lot of refunds, a lot of uh, 
uh, trying to make amends uh, with these clients over last year. And, you know, um, I'd worked really hard over the last decade plus of building um, five-star reviews. That is something that I am uh, very adamant about. It is part of my marketing campaign is to get those reviews because I know that Google favors you if you have a large number of reviews. And uh, side note, uh, if you are on Google and you want to get up to the front page, you don't have five five-star reviews yet, work on that. Ask some past clients. Ask the ones that you're like, I know that they loved love their experience and I know that they would leave me a five star if I asked. Um, and I've got a whole nother podcast episode about that. I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but it's linked in the show notes because future John will do that for you. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, it's linked right up here. Um, but uh, actually, no, I don't. I think that was before I started uploading these. If it's on YouTube, it's linked right up here. If not, it's in the show notes. Uh, but I have a whole podcast episode about um, how to ask for reviews, why reviews are important and all of that. But I had, you know, accumulatively around 130 five-star reviews, zero fours, zero threes, zero twos, and zero ones. Can you give a zero star review? I don't think you can. Uh, but I had zero of those two. They were all five star reviews. I was feeling really good. Um, I was on the front page of Google. I was getting lots of SEO business from that. And then also just like word of mouth, because whenever you leave a five star review, you often talk about that experience with other people so that they have that experience too. So with all this contractor stuff going on. Um, I was not getting reviews. I was also not asking for reviews because I knew that they were not receiving a five-star experience. And uh, and I don't want four-star reviews. I want five. So um, part of part of this is, you know, I, I knew that they weren't uh, receiving that experience, so I didn't ask for the reviews. And, you know, when you when you have a client, you want to provide more value than what they spent. So their perceived value of your services is, you know, the cost, uh, you know, $2,000, $5,000, $100, whatever. What, what, wherever you are, that's what they're expecting. That amount of value, that amount of experience, that level of experience, that's what they're expecting because that's what they've paid. And our job is to go above and beyond that. Um, to uh, For a $2,000 client to give them a $5,000 experience. So, you know, maybe they're not expecting a welcome gift and you send one as a surprise and they get that and they're just like, this is amazing. And maybe they're not expecting you to go through a timeline consultation with them and figure out every minute of their day and help them with that and, and suggest when the ceremony should start because sunset is at this time, this time of year and all of that, like extra helpful stuff. That might not be expected, but if you can do that, it elevates that experience to where their received value is over their perceived value of what they were going to get. And that creates a great experience for them and often leads to five-star reviews and referrals and all of that. So side tangent, <laughs> uh, I even go on tangents when it's just me. So I knew that they're received value was not as much as their perceived value because uh, some clients did not receive videos that were promised. Some clients uh, received videos, but they weren't good quality. And, uh, and I knew that I needed to elevate their experience again to at least get close to what they, uh, they had paid. So, uh, I guess this all started kind of like late 2022 is when this this really started happening. And then into 23, it was happening more and more. And I had already contracted these out and I felt obligated to like keep them on and like hope that things changed. And uh, hindsight uh, should listen to uh, Gary Vaynerchuk where he says, you know, 
hire slowly and fire quickly should have moved on to different people. Uh, that would have saved a lot of this. So if you are in a place where you're maybe working with a second shooter that's constantly uh, showing up late or uh, isn't, uh, you know, really doing what they need to be doing on the day, maybe don't hire them again. Or maybe if you have some that you've already talked to them about it, be like, hey, um, I really need you to do these things at this wedding to continue working with me. Um, and it feels rough. It feels, you know, it's, it's managerial stuff. It's uh, you're running a business and you have to do that. And I know a lot of times we work with friends, maybe we work with family and it's hard to do that. And uh, especially if you don't have that personality of like, Hey, this needs to be done. Go do this thing. Um, and you're just like, Hey, um, I noticed this thing on, uh, you're not really doing this and, ooh, well, I don't, you know, whatever you want to do. Cause you know, you're you and you can do whatever you want to just, you know, don't, don't go all, um, passive aggressive with that. Uh, we need to be aggressive and, uh, this is your business. This is your livelihood. Uh, and they need to recognize that. Um, anyway, soapbox, uh, descended. Um, so I was fielding all of these, uh, disappointed texts and emails and, uh, got super stressed and super depressed, uh, because every time that I opened up my email, uh, there were, there were more upset clients. And every time that I was, um, you know, just like even my photo editing got behind because, I wasn't feeling it and I just felt so depressed and I didn't want to work and I didn't want to market and I didn't want to make connections and I didn't want to do anything anymore because um, everything was just kind of sad. And, you know, we go through this seasons sometimes. Uh, if you're in that season right now, I feel you uh, for sure. Reach out, shoot me a DM. Um, I would love to chat, help you get through this, uh, cause it is not easy, but, um, uh, but yeah, that, that stress just kind of compacted. And then I was behind on delivering photos, uh, which was my part of the contract. And then, uh, that just got me more stressed and depressed and, uh, you know, it spirals from there, but that all led to my one snow reveal. Um, this client, uh, we had been in communication because, uh, we were trying to find footage and, uh, contractor was not being responsive. So, uh, it was taking a little while and they, uh, went and left a one-star review and said, you know, uh, in detail, uh, what they didn't like about working with us and how, uh, it had been weeks and they hadn't heard from me which I had emailed them earlier that week, but you know, uh, whatever, maybe they missed it. Um, and after I, uh, I picked my, my heart and my stomach up off the ground from seeing that one star review and like feeling that, that feeling of like, Oh, I have failed. Uh, this is a very important day for people and we didn't show up. We didn't give them what they needed to, remember this properly and to celebrate it. Instead, when they look back, they're sad. Um, so that was hard. Uh, once, once, <laughs> once I got through that, um, I did send them an email and I was just like, Hey, I saw the review. Totally understand. I get that. Uh, you did not have a great experience. I am also disappointed in the experience that you had. Um, but not, but, and, I wanted to, um, you know, I offered them some sort of remedy uh, because you don't want to, if you do get a negative review, you don't want to just be like, well, I guess that's it. I'm closing up my business um, or just move on. Uh, it's, it's good to leave uh, with a lasting positive impression at the end. And uh, so I talked to them about, you know, a part of, uh, 
possible refund since the video portion they did not receive uh, properly or uh, or even uh, I offered an album because I love making albums. They had not purchased an album in their package and uh, I knew that they still liked the photos a lot. And, uh, and maybe that would be a positive thing that would raise that received value, um, up to closer to what they paid. And, uh, yeah, they picked, I let them pick, uh, however many photos they wanted. I designed the whole thing, uh, put it together. It was around a $2,000 album because they picked a lot of photos and they should I also would if I was in their shoes and, uh, and yeah, they, they were happy with that. They received it. Um, and they ended up uh, taking down their one-star review and putting up a five-star review, uh, which still kind of sounded negative <laughs> at the beginning, but it turned around. So if anyone uh, read the whole thing, it was good. Um, but it's also good for, for those who, you know, uh, future clients of mine, um, it's good for them to see a slightly negative review and how I remedied that, how I worked with them um, to make a better experience instead of just cutting ties and being like, sorry, man, that's too bad. Uh, it gives them more uh, trust, more hope uh, in um uh, my abilities, but also if something does happen that I am going to be there to help fix it uh, the best that I can. So takeaways from this story, um, I would say uh, number one, um, communicate often and openly with your clients. Don't uh, get in that spiral of like, oh man, I have so many unread uh, emails and I, I don't want to get back to them. Uh, and then they just keep building up. And then you're like, Oh, that was three weeks ago. And I really need to get back. Like, uh, keep open communication. Even if you have to say, I don't know yet. I'm working on that. Uh, especially if it's something similar to working with a contractor where you need to get something from them. Um, uh, I, I was telling them like, Hey, uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, I'm one step away from just driving to their house, which is hours away and uh, in picking up the hard drive myself, which kind of ended up doing that anyway. But, um, but yeah, be honest, be open uh, as much as you can. You don't need to, you know, throw anyone under the bus or anything, um, but be, be communicative and be, be there for your clients. Uh, takeaway number two, uh, your business will not end when you have a negative review. It won't. I know uh, we also live in a, uh, a cancel culture, um, which I am all about spending your money where you want to spend your money and not spending your money where you don't want to spend your money uh, and, and using your money as a way to make uh, your voice heard to certain uh, authorities and entities and corporations. I'm all for that. Um, the odds are no one's going to try and cancel you if they had a bad experience. Um, you know, people shouldn't be out there slandering other people. So just know that your business is not going to end if someone has a bad experience with you. I've had multiple people have bad experiences uh, or just not up to the expectations that they had um, over the last 12 years. Um, I don't know why I looked at the calendar. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's March, it's 12. Um, but, uh, but like there, as long as you work with them and kind of going back to takeaway number one, be open with them and communicate about expectations. What are their expectations of working with you? Um, maybe set some expectations that they should have with working with you and then live up to those expectations, even go above and beyond that. That would be great. Um, takeaway number three, uh, offer some options to bring up their received value back to their perceived value. So if they have something that goes on, um, I shared this story uh, last year, maybe two years ago, I had an engagement shoot. I didn't go through my whole system of uh, going, you know, 
downloading photos and everything. Oh, I talked about this in Taryn's episode. Um, that hasn't come out yet. Space time continuum. Um, that's in the future. <laughs> Look forward to that episode with Taryn Rochelle. Uh, it's in a couple weeks. I don't know. Um, but yes, in that one, that's whenever I talked about it. Uh, yeah, I had an engagement session that I came home and didn't go through my whole system of uh, taking my SD card, plugging it in, backing up the photos in multiple places and going through that system. So then the next day when I had a photo shoot, I just grabbed my camera and went and didn't have enough space. And I was like, oh yeah, I backed these up because I always back these up. And uh, I formatted the card and lost all of those photos. Um, so there have been bad experiences for people, but always, um, oh, always, what am I talking about right now? Always, always bring up their received value. That's it. Um, bring that received value back up, even if it goes down a little bit for a minute, which I did. I offered another photo shoot. It actually ended up being a prettier day and they were much more comfortable in front of the camera because they'd already done this for an hour. So they were ready to go the second time. And uh, they were uh, super understanding about everything and it was great. Um, takeaway number four. Um, oh, I said this earlier about uh, the quote from Gary V, how you should hire slowly and fire quickly. Do that. If you're building a team, if you're bringing on associates, if you're hiring second shooters, if you're hiring uh, just an assistant to come around and like get some behind the scenes video and stuff, and they're not doing a great job, if they're not doing the things that you're asking them to do, one, make sure that you are back to takeaway number one. Make sure that you are communicating with them about expectations of what you are wanting them to do instead of just like, oh, I'm hiring a second photographer. You know how to second photograph. Let's go. Um, but make sure that you have expectations set for them because maybe whenever they've second photographed, that sounds weird. Whenever they've shot for another person, um, they, they were doing different things. And maybe the other person was like, I'm going to do all the regular stuff. You just focus on details and reactions of, of other people that aren't the clients. Um, and it, it might be different working with you. So, be open about expectations with them um, and fire quickly if they continue to not meet those expectations and not heed any corrections. Takeaway number five. Do I have a takeaway number five? Um, takeaway number five. Yeah, don't let one bad experience cause more bad experiences um, for your other clients. Because like whenever I was getting in that uh, stressy, depressy spiral, um, that affected my other clients who oh, were fine. Uh, I, you know, I photographed their wedding or, or engagement or brand shoot. And then the photos were just sitting there because I didn't feel like editing them because I was sad. Um, so don't let one bad experience affect the other. Uh, or affect the experiences of your other clients. Allow them to still have that great experience with you. So that's good. Five takeaways. That's good from this episode. I think we're good with five. Uh, thanks for being here with me. Thanks for uh, listening to this story. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you got at least one of those takeaways. Uh, that's uh, either something new or maybe something that you need to re-implement. But yeah, thanks for listening to me chat by myself today um i hope you enjoyed the episode uh if you did leave us a review also if you didn't uh leave us a review uh you know i talked about how uh five star reviews are really important for your business they're also really important for this podcast um podcasters you know this is a free podcast y'all don't have to pay for this at all and a lot of the ads are uh just like affiliate little deals of things that i really enjoy using and that i think that you would enjoy uh so they come on as sponsors uh, so essentially not really getting paid for a lot of these episodes. So uh, leaving a review, sharing with a friend, posting to social media, that is so meaningful. Um, and I am so grateful for every time that I see y'all doing that. 
and I read every single review, 100%, multiple times, probably. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening to uh, today's episode. Next week, I have another one. Don't have the schedule pulled up right now, but it's going to be a good one. It's another uh, another guest, I think. Oh, um, I believe next week is, uh, is Ashley Snyder. Uh, from the Let It Click podcast. And uh, yeah, ooh, yeah. Tune in next week. Ashley's got, it was such a great conversation with her. Uh, So yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to give away too much. So join me next week for episode 205 with Ashley Snyder. And I'll see y'all then. Bye.